everybody, my name is Najib Awuni. I'm the CEO of Duoki and also I'm the technology advisor of Partizia Blockchain. And today I'm pleased to introduce you self-sovereign identity. And I think the question about privacy, we, we try to answer during this, this talk now. I hope it works. <laughs> okay, perfect. So you, we know, all of us, that uh, digital identity and we live in society where we give a lot of uh, personal data to a lot of system. Uh, if you have, for example, a Tesla, you have everything on a Tesla that uh, track you and connect you to the, to the edge and to the cloud. And we also share personal data every day in our daily life for bank, for insurance, for medical. So we have concern about who, who can trust when we share this kind of really highly sensitive uh, data. So what is first a digital ID? I think a uh, good introduction about what is a digital ID. But for, for clear, uh, let's say, example here, you have all of you, when you enter to this room or enter to this uh, conference, you have show your, your ID, so what you call that national ID. So it could be a passport, an ID card. So this is unknown, so it's paper, paper printed, or let's say a, a plastic card, a biometric passport also. Uh, but this is common and people used to use it. Um, but most of us, we also have what we call a social account or a social media account like Twitter, Facebook. I'm sure you, it's not called, uh, they changed the name today, I don't remember the name, it's Meta. So now it's Meta, Meta account. Uh, just a joke for Definity, the, the logo is really close to, to, to your logo. <laughs> I've seen that this morning. <laughs> so maybe you should uh, uh, make claim, uh, claim the, the, the right of your logo. Um, about email account, all of us, I think we have thousands of email accounts, I just joke, but we create one email account just to, to, to register for a system. And this is really pain to create every time for, for register to the conference sometimes or to go to a theater or whatever, we have to register an email account. So if you look the landscape of identity model, I try to be short, but it is important to understand it's like uh, when Cardano presents the different kind of blockchain. In identity space, you also have different kind of identity model. So the, the, the first model that we all know is the centralized model. And we know that the centralized model failed. And I will show you after why it failed. Because here we collect in a central system all your personal data, all your sensitive personal data. And you have seen recently that major breaches happen when you store all your data in one place, okay? You have what we call also federated identity. In fact, you use it every day. I think also on your talk, Definity, you show the social login where you can choose with which login account you select. It's also federation. So you have one system that allows you the possibility to log in with another account. So it may help you to save the registration of another account because you already have a, log, a Gmail, Facebook, Twitter. So you click, then you have a protocol that redirect to the, to the Twitter. You log in to Twitter, then you go back to the, to the service provider. So this model works today well, it's federated, but you need to trust the entity that give you back uh, the authorization to go back to the application. But if you use the federated identity model, behind the scene, the model, the, the service that offer you that, they see everything. They see where you go because they redirect you when you go to, for example, to, to access your e-banking, may you access your um, patient record, they see everything. So they collect also, they accumulate personal data, but for you it's convenient, so you use it. And then today I'm, I'm gonna talk about what we call self-sovereign identity. In this model, you never, let's say, let the uh, service accumulate too much data. Because here you control what they can, they can see on you and you give your consent or not to get access to your attribute. And this model is the model I'm, go I'm gonna talk about. So just to represent the first model, so the, the federation model or the central model, if you look that model is one identity providers, verify your identity and give you information to what we call a service provider. What could go wrong with this model? This. This is a map that's growing day, every day. So the last one, I think it was Facebook, but Facebook is two times <laughs> mentioning this, but there is a lot. Microsoft recently also, uh, big firms. All of them have been breaches at least one time in, a, in their life. And when they say breaches, it's your data that have been breaches. And then it's too late because you have stored all your detail. You know how much cost a medical record is the most important uh, record sold on the dark web. 
because it contains all your personal medical data and this is sold around marketplace, sold around marketplace. So if you look now the SSI system, so the self sovereign identity system. In this model, you see the user is at the middle compared to this one. Here, you don't have the user at the middle. You have the user at the bottom. Here, you have the user at the middle. And every interaction between a service and, an, uh, and you goes to you, which means that you control when someone wants to access, for example, your date of birth. You have the explicit consent, which is requested by the service to access that information. And we can see that with cryptographic protocol, like I'm introduced just after, we not even needed to disclose the date of birth. We can disclose just a proof that we are adult. So let's do a, a game together. So you know the Waldo game. So who can find Waldo here? But don't please mention it. You don't have to reveal where it is exactly. So can you show me the solution of this problem? Or can you give me a, a, a hint to solve this problem? So you don't have to reveal the position, but you, do, you, you have to prove me that you know where it is. In fact, you know the solution, so I'm sure you know, <laughs> but I will give the audience a chance to, 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 to look. So there is two solutions to this problem. The first one, you just cut where Valdo is. So you don't reveal the exact position because you don't remember the picture here. But if I just cut, and give you that back, I can prove that I know where is Aldo. So this is one kind of proof that gives you the fact that I know where it is. The second solution, you do the reverse. You just cut Valdo and you give it to me. So you have found Valdo, but you don't reveal the position. And this example is what we call zero knowledge proof. Very, very basic explanation, sorry, but for cryptographic guys. But it helps you to understand how we can prove to a service that we know something without disclosing the value. And the good example is my date of birth. I don't want to disclose my birthday. I don't want to disclose my uh, year of, of uh, my digital ID. So let's look how blockchain can support a SSI system. To be clear, we don't need blockchain for an SSI system. We need an infrastructure, and I think definitely show really well where we can publish public keys, where we can publish proof of your authentic identity. So blockchain or a decentralized system. So this kind of characteristic are requires to run a digital decentralized system. We need uh, anonymous and privacy is the essential part of this system because at the end, if you go back to the federated or the uh, central model, then you lose privacy. So you need a system where you keep your privacy strong. But you need a system which is secure but also immutable. Then you have issue about right to be forgotten with GDPR, right to erase your identity, right to modify your identity. So when we go to blockchain, you don't have this possibility in most of the blockchain we see on the place. You cannot modify a transaction, you cannot modify uh, the, the record. So the challenges around that are mostly linkability, technology, scalability, and storage of sensitive data. And we, I think uh, we, we see on the previous example that other challenges is how you recover your identity if you lose your keys, if you lose your device. This is a really strong challenge. And I think Kurt, I lead to the floor to, to try to solve and give answer about this challenge. Yes, uh, I will elaborate more on identity and privacy. I'm Kurt Nielsen. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of Patricia Blockchain. And uh, yes, so as Najib was mentioning, uh, you might have uh, that your privacy is maybe linked to other things. So it's not just a matter of protecting your identity. It's also a matter of the data that is used in the services and maybe across services is leaking your identity at the end. So maybe the privacy needs to go a step further in order to actually have real uh, private identity. And that's what I will try to talk about and, and to, to talk about it in by using or talking about three different examples. This is applications on the Patricia blockchain. And then in order to solve this, we need to move beyond the, the uh, zero knowledge proof that Najib was showing. We need a more generic approach to solving for privacy if we want to go this way, which we want uh, in this project called Patricia blockchain. It's a new project, but we have actually been working on uh, 
this uh, mission since 2008. And for the f past uh, four to five years, we have been merging MPC, multi-party computation, which is a generic zero-knowledge computation technology, together with blockchain. And that's what we are launching with the Patricia blockchain uh, project. So let me quickly move on to the first example. So this is all about making private identity as simple as possible. This is collaboration with uh, global leading NGOs. Uh, so here it's all about uh, COVID-19, having a passport showing that you had the vaccine. So over here we have an issuer who is giving you the vaccine, but he also takes a photo of you. And then we use the blockchain to make sure that this information is, uh, is uh, distributed to the people in, in question. So we have a verifier and uh, the citizens again. So this is in the physical world. The uh, verifier scan the QR code and what pops up is a picture of the person in front of him. And that is the identity. So he just looks at the picture and the person in front of him. He yeah. always see the, the person in front of him. So you don't leak more information because he's already there. And then you do the zero knowledge proof in order to tap into all the details about the, uh, the vaccine, whether it's expired and, and so on, type of vaccine. Just had a story, uh, no sorry, it's Kurt, about this uh, uh, pass uh, COVID passport. I'm sure you, you know uh, today uh, some, some valid passport with Mickey Mouse and Adolf Hitler have been issued in Switzerland. <laughs> so we, we valid certificate. Today, I think if you read the press, they, they work. So I can give, you it, give it to you if you want to play. Uh, and this is typically the central model. The actual system where we do the digital passport, you have one key that's signed for the whole uh, Switzerland, uh, let's say, passport. And if this key gets broken, all the system is broken. And now you can create fake certificate like Mike Mouse <laughs> with Adolf Hitler passport. And this yeah. is where uh, the central model fails. Sorry for interrupting you. Perfect, perfect. Yes, so, so this is really a very s simple way to solve the problem. And it, it works in countries where you don't have a strong healthcare sector, but also in, in places where you have a strong healthcare sector, because you don't really need more information to solve this problem. So. And this can be solved with zero knowledge proofs, uh, so it's not really backing my claim in the beginning. But let's take it one step further. So th let's look at the drivers of the uh, internet economy, the advertisement industry, uh, and a service that we are also collaborating with uh, on the Patricia blockchain. So this is about the, uh, a user that has a profile and with a lot of detailed preferences. And then you have a search engine and you have an advertisement market. So a, 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 query, a search query is done by the user and you do a privacy preserving match towards the, uh, the preference information of the users as well as other as external data. And you basically use that information to pick one of many personas. And the personas goes into the advertisement market. And that's where we have the traditional approach, the market or the people are competing about which types of advertisement that you show to the user at the end. But now you actually use the privacy preserving technology to uh, pivot the power in the uh, internet economy. So now the user is in control of, of the data. Uh, so that is bringing us not just private uh, identity, it also brings changing the power structures. And it might even go a step further to, to consider the idea of uh, selling your data, or maybe not selling your data, maybe just selling the use of your data, because that's exactly what you can do when you have this uh, type of technology. So you no longer uh, trading your data, you're just uh, giving uh, the right for someone to use your data without actually uh, disclosing the data. This is a system that we built like three, four, three or four years ago. It has 250,000 users. It's using multi-party computation to do the matching to find the, so the data requests that come into the system, find the right segment, and then the users come in with the data. And the type of use could be anything from input to a survey, or it could be a, it could be phase four uh, trials for for healthcare treatments, so real life continuous trial of, of healthcare treatments, or anything else. So this is three sort of examples of how to uh, step 
uh, how you move towards more privacy beyond just identity. But if you want to do this, we need to go beyond the zero knowledge proof and you need to, to have a more uh, generic approach to, to doing this type of privacy preserving computation. So that brings us to the Patricia blockchain. And so blockchain is, is really about like uh, replacing middleman, your distributed uh, system. So what we do here is to take it one step further and also uh, replace what is known as a trustee in the economy. So a person or an organization that is managing your, your private data and, and, and others as well. Uh, so that's what we're doing. We're adding the privacy in a distributed fashion to blockchain. So this is a picture of the technology stack or the infrastructure. So it's, what it really does is that it's a layer one plus two, that's what we call it. And it's, uh, it looks like any other blockchain, right? Except for the private uh, uh, smart contracts. And those are the smart contracts that is directing the system to run uh, zero knowledge computations, generic computations on private information. There's also a lot of other uh, innovations in here. So we have a efficient layer one with fast track consensus and finalization and sharding. And then, it then it's designed to orchestrate these privacy preserving uh, computations. And the second layer is all about the interoperability and, and the privacy. So you can use the privacy preserving technology to actually do these bridging. And bridging, it becomes a, it's a very sort of in integrated part of, of the network. Uh, am I running out of time? <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. Okay, so just very quickly. So the interoperability is actually solving a decoupling of the token economy behind this. So you come in, you, you use what is called MPC tokens to stake them, and then you run a node in the network. But what you are paid and what the users bring to the network is already liquid external coins that is bridged into the network and channeled through the, uh, the system to the node operators. So we're not creating a new... Uh, cryptographic uh, coin, we're using already existing liquid coins that people already have uh, as means of payment. And that sort of allows us to do this exchange, so you can, we can bring privacy to the blockchain ecosystem, and we can align ourselves by bringing in the uh, coins that exist on the different blockchains, and that's kind of our approach to collaboration with the ec ecosystem. And I'm out of time, but otherwise I would have talked about what we want to do, and we're doing a lot on focusing on the SDG goal, the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, but that will be uh, another talk, I guess. Yes, most likely, yes, and uh, so thank you so much, uh, Patricia Blockchain team, for you. Thank you.